to start out, I'd like you all to imagine me as a visitor from the future. And as a visitor from the future, I'd like to extend you all a warm welcome to the future. Welcome. We're incredibly happy to have you here because it's because of the people like you that the world I live in is as incredible as it is. I live in a place of knowledge and discovery. I live in a place where we've managed to cure cancer, colonize on other planets, and provide all the basic necessities of life to everybody on the planet. Perhaps the greatest innovation that has made it possible for us to accomplish all that we have here in the future is the quantum computer. The quantum computer is capable of processing more data in seconds than your computers can in years. The quantum computer can, um, can solve problems you guys would probably consider impossible. So as we take our imaginations back to 2015 now, I'd like to ask you all a question. How many of you like fiction? I love fiction. I love reading, watching fantasy and science fiction. And the reason that we all love fantasy and science fiction so much is because we love that sensation of our imaginations taking us to a new world, getting to travel in our heads without having to spend a dime. We love that sensation of being reborn as we come into this new world where things that are possible here are impossible there and vice versa. And I would like to introduce you all to a new world now, similar to these ones, but it's even more strange than Harry Potter or Doctor Who because it's real. So in this world, you never know exactly where you are. You never know where anyone else or anything else is either because until something's position is measured by an outside observer, your location is nothing but a probability of being everywhere at once. In this world, if you were to go outside, kick a soccer ball, your act of kicking that soccer ball could cause another soccer ball miles and miles away to react as though it had been kicked as well, even though you never touched it. Although this world sounds really bizarre, stranger than fiction, this is exactly the kind of universe that physicists' equations predict that the tiniest particles that make us up live in. Now, let's think about the computer technology of today. The computer bits, or the computer chips, are getting smaller and smaller and smaller as more transistors are able to fit on a single chip. And according to Moore's law, will continue to get smaller and smaller and smaller as more and more and more transistors are able to fit on a single chip. If this trend continues, eventually these chips will get small enough to adhere to those quantum rules in the universe that I just described. Now, to have a better understanding of what this would mean, let's talk about bits. Bits are zeros and ones. Those zeros and ones are what make up the instructions that provide code that tells the computer what to do. But if you'll remember how the quantum world works, you can be in two places at once. And in fact, until you are observed by an outside observer, you are in every possibility at once, and, you know, until your position is measured. So the difference between a bit and a quantum bit or a qubit is something like this. A classical bit can only be a zero or a one. The keyword there is or. A qubit is a zero and a one and everything in between this is what physicists call a superposition of being zero and one at the same time. So to understand, this is a bit abstract, to understand a more concrete example of how a quantum computer running on these qubits would be different than a classical computer that's just running on bits, I'm going to give you a concrete example. Let's say that we want a computer program to find us a book to read. And let's say that that book is Michio Kaku's Physics of the, Imp Physics of the Future. So a classical computer would find this book for you somewhat like this. The first step would be to find the bookshelf where this book was on. And how a classical computer would have to do that is go through each individual computer until it found one with, no, sorry, each individual shelf until it found the one with books on it. And then once it found the shelf with books on it, it would have to dig through all the books individually searching each one for the words Physics of the Future by Michio Kaku on the spine. Now, this process could be very long and arduous, especially assuming that there's lots of bookshelves and lots of bookshelves have books on them. And of course, this is a bit of a silly example, but let's think about how a quantum computer would solve this and let's think about those principles. So a quantum computer, instead of having to search each individual shelf for which shelf had books on it, the quantum computer, since it uses qubits, which are zero, one at the same time, superposition, zero or one, a lot of different possibilities, it would be able to check multiple bookshelves at a time, automatically locating the one with books on it. 
And then, once it found the bookshelf, it would be able to check all the books at the same time, automatically locating the one with Physics of the Future by Michio Kaku on the spine. So, like I said, this is a bit of a silly problem, and naturally it would be overkill to design a whole computer program just to find a book, but let's think about these principles. If we want to do things in the future, like I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, like you know, cure cancer, provide the basic necessities of life to everybody, we would have to have a machine that, that would be able to process large amounts of data at once, and we would have to be able to solve these large, complex processes, because if we want to do things like colonize on other planets or, um, or cure cancer, we would be dealing with vast amounts of data. Our normal computers would have to, to go through that data and to solve these problems, it would take a long time as it checked each individual shelf for which shelf had the books on it and each individual book for which book had Physics of the Future by Michio Kaku on the, on the spine. Quantum computer could, um, could integrate this data and solve the problems so much quicker than our current computers could. And now, this sounds a bit impractical, but let's look at a quantum computer that has already been built. This is a company called D-Wave. They are a company that builds quantum computers, and so far, um, if you want to buy one of these, they're about uh, $10 million, and they're 10 feet tall, 10 feet wide. Now, if you'll think about how our computers used to be, they were a lot like this. They were big, they were impractical, and only big, rich companies had access to them. I think only Google and Apple or some other company uses um, D-Wave's quantum computers. But look at where our computers are now. They're portable, they're efficient, they're everywhere. If quantum computers are able to follow the same trend that classical computers did, this will be the future of computing. This kind of machine is going to be the kind of thing that will enable us to solve all those problems and live in the world like the one I described at the beginning of my presentation. Now, some of you may, may be wondering, how did I get into this and why do I care? And to explain kind of um, why I'm interested in these weird abstractions and how I know all this, um, I grew up in a large family, eight kids, and I've always loved, or I've always wanted to travel and sort of get away from those seven or so scenes that are my life. But it turns out it, it's a little bit of work and a little bit of money to haul eight people onto an airplane or into a car. So to make up for my lack of external travel, I would travel internally in my head. I would read books about the fantasy and the science fiction that I told you about, and yeah, like that. <laughs> and I soon came to realize that um, our world is just as interesting and fantastical as all this. So what I love about the idea of quantum computing is it provides that um, that new universe for me to go to. It provides that new mindset that's so weird and different from the world that I live in while not keeping me trapped in my head because it has practical applications and you know it's something that has a basis in reality as well as in imagination. And reality and imagination combined is the most powerful force in this universe. And so that is the future of computing and thank you for listening to me. <laughs>